Worship me, and I may yet be merciful. Get fucked, Kodak. Then again, maybe not. Welcome back, you bunch of motherfuckers, to Charles Plays Hexen. Charles in the house. In the last episode, we completed Chapter 2, and are now standing at the precipice of Chapter 3, the Heresy Arc Seminary. The Heresy Arc himself is the boss of the chapter, so once we kill him, we can colonize this seminary for the British Empire. For those of you who do not know what a seminary is, it can be summed up as a school for priests, ministers, and other such men of the cloth. As such, the game will introduce some new enemies here, one of which is appropriate for the zone, and one of which is not. Here is the one who is not. That pale centaur, that is firing blue bolts from his shield, is a slotor. Slotors are essentially the centaur's big brother, and actually pose a threat unlike their smaller cousins. Their projectile is quite damaging, and very hard to block with your shield. On the bright side, they aren't too much tougher than the regular centaur fodder. One smack from the hammer will typically do the fuckers in, and flèches are always handy to have for them. Do bear in mind, that they possess the same reflective guard as the centaurs. And now for the new enemy, which the remainder of the game, is going to be absolutely polluted with. The flying wizards in robes are dark bishops. Dark bishops are kind of like a fritz, but they manage to be even more fucking annoying for a few reasons. Reason 1, I cannot fatality the brick. Reason 2, they fire volleys of homing fireballs which will even attempt to follow you around corners, and reason 3, they can be very difficult to melee, because they have a teleport of sorts, that functions like a dodge. I do not mind, having dark bishops around, because they just casually throw out some sinister sounding chanting, and I enjoy how that shit sounds. I suppose you noticed one of the serpents, was being choked by gas just now. That gas appears, if you or an enemy hits a mushroom, and functions just like the cleric slushy. Needless to say, do not stand in that crap. Anyway, let's head into the seminary proper. We are at the seminary threshold, and as you can see, or rather as you cannot see, it's almost pitch black in this motherfucker. What's worse is I do not have a torch to help out here, so it's time to play an elaborate game of murder in the dark motherfuckers. As a seminary, this place is going to be packed to bursting with dark bishops, and thankfully their projectiles will give me at least some idea of my surroundings. I see one bishop there has managed to piss off a net in. Funnily enough, a dark bishop will lose to a net in 9 times out of 10, because during in fighting they are just like Johan and keep forgetting to dodge. That's perfectly okay with me, however, because for Baratus a net in is about a thousand times easier to take on than a dark bishop. Particularly if said dark bishop wants to hover out of range like a complete big bag. Dark bishop fireballs are not very damaging. Just as well, because even dealing minor damage, the homing properties can cause the damage to rack up rather fast. Fuck this absolute bullshit excuse of a level. I can't see a goddamn thing, except for the incoming Dark Bishop fire. Somebody turn the fucking lights on, your British overlord demands it. Evidently somebody was listening, and knew what was good for them. Now that I can see what the hell is going on, let's get to work clearing the place out. Now that the lights are on, and we can actually see further than the length of our dicks, you can see an army of dark bishops has teleported in to ruin your day. I would suggest you employ all your green, and blue mana taking them out, if you absolutely must. You can get quite a lot of it back in several ways in the Heresy Archers Seminary. There are several tunnels and rooms connected to this main area, most of which contain plenty of mana for the fighter on the go. And heck, if you are feeling cheeky like this British overlord, you can even say screw the mana and whip out your fleshes. Fleshes work rather well on the slow moving dark bishops, as they tend to activate their dodge once they are struck, which is too late as far as fleshes are concerned. In fact the level 7 perk that increased your fleshe damage will really benefit you here, as it enables you to take down a dark bishop with a single fleshe, if you are reasonably fortunate on the damage rolls. But even if you are not, the Dark Bishops tend to bunch up when in pursuit of you via aggressive floating, so tossing a fleshe will typically hit more than one of the fuckers, unless you miss completely. One moment while I kill this serpent, his fireballs hurt a metric thick ton more than the bishops. I see we are about to level up. What is our reward for doing so? Our reward is 10 more false advertisement hit points, and boosted damage on the Great Sword quite a second area ability. We have not yet fully assembled said Great Sword, but not to worry, the final segment, the blade itself, can be found within the seminary walls. In fact you can collect the bitch, as soon as you enter don't you know? 
And now with the majority of the Dark Bishops turned into green ashes, this place has quietened down considerably. There are more Dark Bishops lurking about, and they will get theirs in due time. This dumb shit can get his right the fuck now. Now then, there is more to be done in the seminary. You no doubt saw the stained glass which is asking to be smashed, and every stained glass window hides a switch that we must hit to proceed. However, before we begin doing that, I want to introduce you all to what I will officially name the FedEx platform. I see it has already coughed up a banishment device for us, that's rather neat. An explanation is in order. This platform will descend with random items and enemies when you step near it. It will stay down for about 30 seconds, and will then retract. It takes a few minutes to reset, so if you can be bothered with it, it's a great way to refill on some items. The damn thing is actually capable of dropping craters of might, so you can bet your arms and legs that I will be paying the fuck a visit repeatedly. The crater of might is easily the most powerful item it can cough up. It will not cough up any percolators, icons of the defender, discs of repulsion, mystic urns, dragon skin bracers, torches, and as far as I am aware it will also not cough up any chaos devices. It is able to cough up both kinds of mana, bottles of grape drank, banishment devices and craters of might as previously mentioned. I know that sounds like it can cough up jack shit, but do remember that the crater of might is arguably the best item in the game. But enough about that for the time being. Let's smash these stained glass windows and hit the switches to open our point of ingress deeper in the seminary. You no doubt noticed each one is also hiding a fod red in. If you smash the glass with your shield bash, you even knock the etin on its ass for a free kill. Anyway that's all six switches pressed. We can now proceed. Get out of my face shitbag. That tunnel will lead down to the silent refectory and I will end this episode there. We have more shit to do in the seminary itself. I don't think you could see it, so I will look through the grate a second time. As you can see, an icon of the defender lurks within that small pool, and you bet your ass I want that shit. Actually it's much of a muchness since I will burn that icon about one second after I pick the fucker up. It's just a neat opportunity to show off the new weapon once I collect the blade for it. Incoming slaughter barrage. What's up Mr. Redin? We haven't got time to play around with you, we have a sort to assemble. Getting through this tunnel can be a bit of a bastard, what with all the incoming slaughter fire. You can spam the hell out of discs of repulsion, but I want to hold on to my collection for a little bit. Besides, this is a prime opportunity for me to talk about the Great Sword Quartus. In the vanilla game, the Great Sword Quartus did not actually have a melee attack despite being a goddamn sword, which always struck me as completely retarded. Fortunately its brutal hex and counterpart does have a melee ability. That's the good news. The bad news is that its melee strike ability is bug, and wastes green mana, making the weapon essentially terrible. You will be pleased to hear that I fucked around with the coding, and have managed to fix said bug, and I even fixed the fleshy ammo wasting bug in the process, but I have no idea how I managed to pull that shit off motherfuckers. Throwing fleshes with the hammer, or crossbow out will still waste mana as normal, I only managed to fix that shit for quietus. So spare a thought for that magnificent bastard Sergeant Mark for having to dick around with all the coding, because the first time I tried to fix the quietest bug I took one look at the coding, and my brain immediately said fuck that shit, blew a fuse, and powered down for about two days. Nearly done in here, just that one remaining serpent to destroy. I don't have any crossbow mana, but not to worry, I can just knock him off the side with the hammer secondary. For those wondering, no, the crossbow and hammer will not see massively reduced twos once we assemble our great sword, both can do shit that the great sword quarter simply cannot. Now then, that switch that was somewhat hidden behind those destroyable trees will grant you access to four tunnels in the hallway. Two of them lead to where the serpents were attacking you from, and you can collect discs of repulsion from one of them. You can also collect both kinds of mana from the tunnel. This serpent has the downs, and is stuck on the revolving door. Sucks to be him. This is a first world problem, if I ever saw one. Open the fuck up, your British overlord demands it. You rotten fucking blighter. What part of British overlord? was too difficult for you to comprehend, was it the British, or the Overlord? Gotcha bitch! Oh my god you goddamn troll doors stop wasting my time! Open up or it's off to the coal mines with you! Okay boys and girls, this was our ultimate goal for the episode. 
This room contains a small army of Fenger to Fritz as well as a shitload of pots and vases for you to bust open. You can collect a ton of mana in here, but most importantly, hold that thought. Don't waste my time. As I was saying, most importantly, this room houses the blade of our great sword, and once we claim that shit we have the assembled weapon. You fail to amuse me. That has got to be the shittest job of performing a fatality that I have ever done in the entire history of the British Empire. Anyway, let's scoot around this room and collect all the mana we can since the hammer second area opened most of the pots. One of the pots is supposed to contain a dark bishop as a nasty surprise, but he seems to have failed to spawn. Either that or the hammer took him out, in either case no skin off my nose don't you know. And now as you can all see, we have assembled the vanilla great sword Quartus, because Baratus sucks at Ikea. Imagine him trying to put a simple table together, you'd end up with some demented form of corporate art. Good luck putting your craters of might on that shit. This is a bug. Fortunately there is a way around this shit. To get the brutal hex in Quartus you need to open the console and then to give the Quartus. It's technically cheating, but it's only being done to get around this silly bug motherfuckers. Now armed with Quartus, let's go test the fucker out on some unfortunate souls. 100% British Overlord approved. Quartus has two attacks. It has two melee swings similar to the axe, and does slightly more damage, which is essentially a trade-off since you cannot block with Quartus out. The second Ari which looks like a goddamn BFJ shot costs 12 of both mana colors, and will go through enemies until striking a wall, doing massive damage to anything unfortunate enough to be in the way. You might be wondering why one would ever use the crossbow, or hammer given the second Ari ability. You would use the crossbow, because it is better for taking out lone enemies at a distance. As for the hammer, let me tell you something about the quieter secondary. It hates walls. It hates them a lot. You will understand soon enough, boys and girls, but in the meantime hit that Bayo Wolf music, motherfuckers. You know I really should be holding on to icons of the Defender for much later in the game, but fuck that shit. I will not deny you the Beowulf music as kickery, because I am a generous British overlord don't you know. Okay you can see the quieter secondary problem. The projectile is fat. It only needs to have one pixel hit a wall to cause the whole thing to fizzle out, making it horribly inept as a projectile in tight spaces. Needless to say, the hammer secondary is far better suited as it operates off a line death, and the crossbow is the same, so they do not suffer that problem. Let's finish looting this room. Looks like we missed a serpent. We didn't miss the fucker that time. This room is a neat place to restock. There are fleshes and bottles of grape drank around the outside, and in the center pool there is more mana, if you happen to need it. I actually could use two of each kind of mana, so I'll just help myself motherfuckers. Okay, looks like that's everything. Let's head back to the hypo style proper, and check out something I neglected to mention earlier. You will all have to pardon me for forgetting this, as I was busy trying to dodge about 10 billion Dark Bishop shots. Over here is this mural. There are six gems that represent planets that need to fit in here, one of which is already done for us. We must complete this to open the way to the chapels, which is where you will find the nine hut son of a bitch. Fuck the hell off while I'm talking you little prick. Destroy. As I was saying, you must find the remaining five gems and place them here before you can even think about finding the puzzles which is essentially giving you two main goals for the seminary, which for some stupid reason I keep wanting to call hypo style. Let's see what the FedEx platform coughs up for us this time. Fan fucking tastic. I have not yet entered him of shoot level, and it has already given up a crater of might. Clearly it knows the time in the driver's seat for this game, and wishes to win my favor. If it keeps giving up those tasty little craters then it certainly will have won the heart of this British overlord. Hint hint nudge nudge Mr. Platform. Now then, at an ambush aside, the first area we need to head to is at the bottom of this elevator. 
three gems for the mural can be found down here. The other two are located in another offshoot level. This elevator itself can be a bit of a bastard to deal with. The switch here will send it down to the lower level, but it travels very quickly. And if you are not quick on your feet it will tag you for full damage, because lol John Romero, we are going to wait for the fucker to return, before we make our no damage attempt. Let's do this motherfuckers. Outplayed John Romero, and don't think I don't know about the faggot serpent waiting at the bottom. Outplayed yet again John Romero, you're gonna have to do better than that to nail this British overlord. Alright boys and girls, this portal will take us to our next destination, but I will wrap this one up here. This has been Charles Plays Hexen. Thanks for watching as always you bunch of motherfuckers.